when you look at um, the way that coaches in the U.S. teach now, has that changed? Um. Oh yeah. You know, I I, I definitely do. Uh, you know, when when I was coming up in the coaching ranks, you know, I think the 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 guy that everyone had looked to uh, maybe was you know amongst amongst many others was probably Coach John Wooden and the success that he had. He played a certain style. He kept them you know a full court style and an offensive system, and and uh, and that was that was uh, uh, true to this day. You know how 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 to how to do that. You know, for others, just like Rick Pitino, and does the exact maybe some of the same things. And now it's kind of shifted into like Coach Calipari in the collegiate level, where the high level athlete in a wide open system and let the athletes kind of decide how things go. Yeah. Where you truly find the the, the great coaching is when it's lesser ability, and how do they maximize the talent that they have? Yeah. Uh, given given what they have, and that could be from from high school to all the way to the various collegiate levels, and those are the you know as as you look at basketball from a from a coach's perspective, uh, that's when you truly are amazed. You're like, my goodness, he got all that he could out of those guys, yeah. and yeah. they played the way that he wanted the game to be played, right. and uh, you know I <laughs> so. As you go along your coaching career, uh, coaches evolve and they change as well. Yeah. You know, and I'm the same way. And I wanted to to definitely score a lot of points when I was early in my coaching career and have teams that led, you know, or 90 points a game. And we were really offensive-minded. And uh, and yet when I matched up against, you know, when, it got, when the game got really slow, I wasn't as proficient perhaps as I could have been in the half-court defense. And so I, I put, uh, applied I'm all, almost all of my attention to that, right. so that I could get better at half court defense. And I sought out people, and uh, I found guys like Coach Bob Kloppenberg, who was you know considered one of the gurus of defense, you know. And then I invited him over to my practices, and he came out, and you know he completely opened my eyes as to how. It, it wasn't the concept; it was how to teach it. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's never about what you see all the time. You know, there's a, there are a ton of systems out there. Everything from every offensive way to go, but it's not what you know. It's what can you teach. Yeah. And that's what I really wanted to get down, and I, and I learned it, and I learned it well, and made some of my own adjustments based on my own personnel, and uh, and became very comfortable at at half court defense. Yeah. And you know, it, it then relied on the execution of the athlete, but it wasn't that we didn't know what we were supposed to do. It's not like we didn't know that we were supposed to rotate or where the ball was supposed to be forced or 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 cut the court in half and not allow it to be reversed. It wasn't any of that. That those were the basic fundamental concepts that were there now. And then it was up to the athlete to do to do their part and to try to stop it. And and that's where I felt that I was gaining an edge, and uh, and then I could shift my attention then onto some offensive system. And when I wanted I wanted five players to touch the ball. You know, I saw the success that a Phil Jackson and Tex Winter were having, and I, you know, everybody starts saying, "My goodness, the triangle is so complicated." And I initially thought the same thing, and then I one day started to de- devote more time to it. And uh, and at Oregon State, I invited Tex Winter to come up and conduct the clinic, okay. uh, along with Bob Kloppenberg, and we spent time together. And I really realized, you know, he gave me the Lakers playbook, and 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 essentially it was like there's really not a whole lot to this, you know. And people make it seem like it's very complicated, but it's really not. Right. And and I started to adopt more things, and then I thought that I could implement it into a secondary break and not ever stop. I didn't like teams that stopped. I wanted to keep the flow going consistently, and I used that same concept. That it worked for me. Yeah. And 
And therefore, you know, I had my own system and style of play. If we, because I also saw during my time at Oregon State when I was with Jay John, he started learning from him about each possession mattered. You know, each possession was zero zero. Yeah. And, you know, there was going to be one person who scored one point, two points, or three points. And, you know, and you had to defend it then. And, and that, that started to absolutely make sense to me. And during my time after Oregon State becoming a professional basketball coach, I had a shorter window of a, of a shot clock. So we had to be very proficient at what we were going to be doing with 24 seconds. Yeah. And, and how many possessions were we going to get back and uh, that really started to pay off huge dividends on the end. Uh, so, you know, was, I've learned a lot from everybody, and uh, I just, you know, wanted to. And I think that's why, you know, now when I talk to coaches, they say, you know, what do you want? You know, really, what's your philosophy? It was always talk to me, too. And it takes a while to, to, to earn what your philosophy is. Yeah. You know, for me, I want five, five players to touch the ball. Yeah. I want them all to. to to work for each other. Instead of screen, I want the ball to move from one side of the floor to the other and maybe back again. Yeah. And uh, and if that was the case, then I knew that I made it difficult for the defense to defend me. And then uh, consequently on defense, you know, I cut the court in half and forced the baseline. And and therefore I knew I had two more two more defenders on that side, you know, with the baseline. And... Uh, and these are just things that I just kind of developed along the way. But if you had asked me that early in my career, I couldn't answer, I couldn't answer it. And uh, but these are all like kind of learned experiences, and and I think that's really what what coaching is all about. I I send out basketball information to coaches uh, uh, every day, and uh, you know they want they want defense, you know, or they want offense, and I, I tell them you got to be more. Dad, tell me really what you want. Yeah. You know, because there's thousands of things out there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, uh, I also caution them. I'm like, you know, you can read all this stuff. It'll take you a month to read it all. Yeah. But it's about what you believe in and what you're going to teach. Because uh, this is how you believe you want to play this game. And... If so, then those that you're that you're teaching will will believe it too, and they'll play that way, and uh, and that'll be better uh, for you, you know, in the long run. You know, even if you lost, you lost the way that you wanted to play the game.